Eight hours after Theresa May announced retaliation against Russia by expelling 23 diplomats, among other measures, so far we've had no official reprisals from Putin. But speaking yesterday, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov promised a swift response. As we already did some days ago, we asked them to provide us with proof. They replied, proof is not needed. We asked them to send an official request as required by the procedures of the Chemical Weapons Convention. They told us, you know the official request is included within Theresa May's speech in Parliament. So, you understand the level of seriousness when communicating such things. But the response will come very soon, I can assure you. Well, that was Sergei Lavrov. Um, Oksana Ontonenko is an expert on Russian foreign policy from the Institute of Global Affairs, and she joins us now, as does Ian Dale from LBC, who Hello. has arrived. Welcome. Um, Russia has threatened a response, repeatedly, in fact, um, and yet so far we haven't had one. Why not, do you think? Well, I think the main reason are the Russian elections. Uh, I think the Kremlin probably finds it very inconvenient to have that crisis now playing out just the day before the elections. Uh, and therefore, we are likely to have a response uh, probably right after the elections, probably Monday or Tuesday next week. Oh, really? So you don't think it's going to come before then? I mean, it sounds from a sort of timing point of view from Sergei Lavrov and others that it would come kind of immediately. Well, I think at the moment, uh, uh, if, if they wanted to respond immediately, they, they would have, have responded so. already yesterday. But I think clearly there is now a calculation, if one looks at Russian domestic politics today, uh, the key concern the Kremlin has for the elections is to have a turnout. Uh, and turnout will not increase if the more liberal, more uh, entrepreneurial, more middle class uh, Russians really feel that we are entering a period of new isolation and a new crisis with the West. So I think they want to pl downplay that for the time being, but I think the more uh, response is going to follow next week. I mean, do you think there are voices then around Putin trying to moderate him and what he does in terms of a response to Britain? I think it's very difficult to say who are the voices around mm. Putin now because the Kremlin walls are, um, are high and today it's very difficult to really uh, understand how the decision making is being made. But what we really know is that there are voices in the Russian society. The opinion polls show that over the last year alone, the number of Russians who support improvement of relations with the West and particularly Europe has increased by more than 15%. Uh, we really see more and more demand from the society to normalize relations. Uh, and we see particularly from the young generation uh, in the streets, more and more talk uh, about, you know, Russia being isolated, that, that any modernization and technological development of Russia needs better relations with the most developed and most democratic countries of the world. And these are precisely people whom Putin needs to mobilize to get up to his 65, 70 percent of, uh, of turnout. Right. I mean, what do you make um, of that claim that actually we won't see any retaliation until after the election? It's entirely possible. I think it's entirely possible. We might hear it in the next five minutes as well. Who, who can tell? I think the key thing here is the scale of the response. And if the Russians, say, expel five or ten British diplomats... Well, and I've just been told that they are going to be expelling uh, British diplomats. Yeah. They haven't said a number, but uh, apparently the news is just breaking. They will expel British diplomats. Yeah. I mean, we knew that was going to yeah. happen, of course. But if it's five or ten, that's very different to 30 or 40. Mm. And I think they could... I mean, we've heard that some of the language from Sergei Lavrov has been interesting where he's sort of saying well Gavin Williamson sort of young boy insignificant they just sort of swat it away um, I mean it could be that it, it's not that serious but as I understand it Theresa May has a second round of sanctions to announce immediately after the tit for tat now and I, but I think that will depend on how serious the tit for tat is I mean there's been criticism um, of Theresa May Oksana saying that actually she could have gone a bit further uh, with her initial tranche of, of sanctions and expulsions um, and tougher on Russian money um, in London. Do you agree? Well, I, I don't at the moment see what Tough, being tough on Russian money in London could do to actually put pressure on President Putin himself. I mean, he has been working very hard to uh, repatriate all the Russian money back to Russia. And in fact, m most of his inner circle people who are already on multiple sanctions lists already have all their money back. So the type of oligarchs we're talking about, you know, most of them are either um, had been escaping from Russia or they have a kind of a second tier association. And if the money, are, their money are targeted, I think for Putin it's going to be uh, just a victory because it will uh, make him feel that uh, you know he can have more influence and the money are coming back.
Tit for tat, though, will just escalate uh, tensions. Is that really what Britain wants to achieve? I think it's got to show that it's strong. You can't let yourself be pushed around by a bully. And this is the end of a long path, which has included interference in you know, the American presidential elections, the Brexit referendum. There's been a low level behind, uh, under the wire interference in Western democracy. And I think we've got to say enough's enough. All right. Oksana, I'm going to say enough is enough on this discussion. Thank you for joining us. Now, is Brexit 